welcome to another segment of DSU Inside Perspective. I'm Carlos Holmes, and this is the show where we talk with administrators, faculty, staff, students, and alumni, and even people from the outside about some of the things that are going on in the world and some of the great things that are going on at the Delaware State University. Today I have Shonda Pohl, who is the director of our honors program. And we want to talk about that to find out what's going on with our honors program. Thank you yes. so much for being on our show. Thank you, Carlos. It's good to be here. So talk to me about what the honors program is and why DSU students should want to be a part of it. The honors program is about uh, academic achievement for our honors students. It's actually to be able to help to enrich them and whole to have a work-life balance. Academically, they're coming in with 3.25 GPA or higher, so academically, they actually are disciplined students. Mm -hmm. Our job in the honors program is to make sure that they receive the enrichment, everything from learning how to be a scholar, transitioning to a leader to work in the workplace, um, actually exposing them to undergraduate research opportunities, internships, and so forth. Mm -hmm. So to be an honors student is actually to be able to be part of an academic enrichment program that will last them a lifetime. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, what are the requirements for, for getting in the honors program? Getting into the honors program right after you graduate from high school. Your GPA must be 3.25 or higher. SAT score is 1050 or your ACT score is 22. And also we like to actually look for if you have any type of community, um, you know, enrichment or so forth, that does help with their well-roundedness, but that's pretty much the criteria for admissions into the honors program. So freshmen that are coming here for orientation in the summertime, yes. how, do we, how do we introduce them to this opportunity? What we do is, um, as the new director, I will be speaking at new student orientation, open house, to be able to introduce the honors program. There is a, a link on the admissions letter that to state if you're actually qualified to apply for the honors program, our freshmen can apply right online. Mm -hmm. And so there is not a fee to be able to apply into the honors program. And so from that point, they will be communicated by our program assistant, Ms. Terry Paul Smith, to give them an official um, you know, confirmation that you've been accepted into the honors program. Okay, yes, so, sir. but we said freshmen. Yes. Um, what if I'm, what if I come here and I'm just so intimidated by the prospects of entering an honors program and I, I just wanna get started and just get myself acclimated to the academic journey, no pressure. And, but then by the time I get to my sophomore year, I'm like, you know, I really should, I should get involved with this honors program. Is there a way for somebody beyond their freshman year to be, be involved in the honors program? Absolutely, absolutely. It, when we have students who come in in their second year, we do have what you're supposed to take are six classes under the honors program. However, if they've already taken a couple of them in their freshman year, we're not able to go back, but we can go forward. So say for instance, this new method we have is called honors course option. So if a student is enrolled in their sophomore year and they've registered under the Office of Advisement, we can take and a look at some of those classes where they can be converted into honors courses. We would give them a packet that they would submit to their professor mm -hmm. to solidify why it should be created to be an honors course. Professors mm -hmm. actually give extra assignments to be able to state, okay, this can be an honors course. So in their second year, they still have three years to be able to take these six recommended honors courses to be able to complete the honors program. Mm -hmm. So there is hope and all is not lost. Mm. Now I have this picture from the December 2019 commencement. That had to be a record number of 4.0 students. Uh, so, and the, so obviously something was working. These had to be honor students, I, yes. would, I would expect. Yes. Um, but the purpose of the honors program goes beyond the grades, the academics though, right? Speak yes, it to, does. Speak to that. Yes, it does. Right now, what we're implementing, which is new, it's what I call the student leadership workshops. This is under the Hornet Leadership Academy that I developed along with Dr. Clytrice Watson, mm -hmm. who's the Associate Provost and actually oversees the Office of Student Success. Mm -hmm. So what we want to do is expose our honor students to different speakers who are coming in. For instance, this semester I have three workshop leaders coming in to discuss time management, how to transition from scholars to leaders, and also how to 
and what to put on your social media. Of course, actually, when you apply for a position or an internship, companies and agencies look at your social media pages. So we have mm -hmm. you know, workshops such as those to be able to expose our honor students to learn more about more than just the academic side mm -hmm. of it. And we're also able to connect them with internships and research uh, internships as well. We also now have funding resources to pay for our graduating seniors to take the GRE or GMAT LSAT prep courses to be able to help them to be able to prepare for these graduate tests as well. Mm -hmm. So we're doing a lot of different types of things to be able to enrich our honor student than more than just wearing the red jacket or the honors cord at graduation day. Sounds very diverse. Sounds yes. Very diverse. Yes, sir. Um, you know, there had been a tradition here at Delaware State University that we would have an honors day every spring. Yes. And I understand that that has been discontinued. Yes. What happened? Well, with traditions, we still have to respect our traditions and we still hold on to some of them. Yeah. What occurred in the past is we've had so many different types of research days from different types of programs on campus. So administration thought it would be a good idea just to be able to collaborate into one research day in which all of our students at the Delaware State University can participate in. So it's not just honors students, it's students' body as a whole. Mm -hmm. And so we still have an honors program component of research day, along with honors recital that's under um, Dr. Now Mabel How does Morrison. that component work? Well, it's, it's within the program in mm -hmm. the research day. Mm -hmm. And so there's a part of the program where we would submit out, you know, different types of academic rewards. And we have the honors recital in which our music majors actually have been studying and, and practicing. Um, and they're in the honors recital. And so they'll be able to play their pieces, with different types of instruments under uh, Dr. Mamel Morrison. This will so, all go play, take place on, during the same day? Right, on, on research day. And, and so what date is research that day? That is April 18th. April 18th. Right, so it runs from 8.30 a.m. to about 4.30 p.m in the Bank of America building. And so now we're able to have one day. Instead of having our students to go to different types of research days, it's a, it's a great idea to be able to collaborate. And that way it opens up the door to all of our Delaware State University students, not just honor students. Now, I, I, I remember we've had research days in which, uh, you know, uh, uh, posters, yes. uh, research posters were set up in the Martin Luther King Student Center. Yes. We also had <clears throat> students giving presentations, oral presentations, yes. explaining their research and taking questions from the audience. Yes. Is it a combination of those two things? Yes, it is a combination still of the oral and the live poster presentations. This way our students are able to gain experience into discussing the research that they have conducted. And it looks great on your CV and it does help if you're looking to take the avenue of graduate school, mm -hmm. medical school, or even to work inside of a lab, mm -hmm. or whichever your major is and which avenue you decided to take. So we do want to maintain that type of tradition and that type of experience for our Delaware State University students. Sounds like it gives them something to work towards. Yes, it does, and to be proud of. Yeah. Now, you just started in this position not long yes. ago, right? Yes, February 3rd. February 3rd. Yes. Before that, you were in the College of, uh, of, of uh, Natural Sciences, uh, Yes, when, when it was CMNST, but now it is CAST. So I started in 2007 for mm -hmm. the Creosa Center. At the time, it was called Creosa, mm -hmm. but of course, it's called OSCAR, the Optics Center. Mm -hmm. And then I transferred to the Biology Department for the Neuroscience Research Center, and that's under the direction of Dr. Melissa Harrington. Mm -hmm. So I've been about in undergraduate research for about 12 years now. Mm -hmm. So now I've transitioned over to the honors program, and also there'll be a component along with the honors program called undergraduate research experiential learning. Mm -hmm. And so that center will be combined into one called URELA. And so we'll be able to help our, not just our honor students, but our DSU student body as a whole to be able to have them gain experiential learning. President Allen would like all of our students to have experiential learning. Because as you know, when you graduate from college, it's really hard to get a job to stay I have no experience, but please take a chance on me. Mm -hmm. This way, our DSU students, by the time they graduate, they would have had experiential learning and so along with the curriculum and the methods that they're learning as well. Mm -hmm. So they don't have to just go out to get a job at the mall. They can actually work in state-of-the-art research labs, right. whether it's DSU or whether it's at you know, Lockheed Martin or what have you. So that's my job as a new director of URELA to be able to not only help our honor students, but our student body as a whole. 
Yeah. Well, thank you so much for breaking down our honors program as it yes. exists now. Good luck to you. Thank you. Uh, in your new position. And uh, students, you got some challenges waiting before you here at our honors program. You should be taking advantage of them. Yes. Okay? Thank you so much for being on our show today. Thank and you thank for you for joining us for another segment of DSU Inside Perspective. Everyone have a good day.